Chapter 5, Confidence at its Core. This is the final chapter. And let me tell you something right off the bat. Confidence is something you have to see from your eyes in order to become it. And even more important, you have to do confidence in order to become confidence. Now, a lot of you will think of this as the concept of fake it till you make it. And yes, that is involved in this process. What I mean more is you have to be around confident people. You have to embody confidence in yourself in order to actually realize what the hell it is. Because the feeling of confidence is a mindful feeling. It is a being in the moment, being very self-aware, and at the same time, understanding exactly what is going on in technical aspects. It's all confidence. And we're going to try to dig a bit deeper into this concept right here. Now, try to understand that in this chapter five, the final chapter, there is no way that I can convey everything I know about confidence, all the science that we know. Actually, there is not much science, believe it or not. But what I will try to do is tell you one very, very important story that in my life embodies what confidence in a man really is. So when it comes to the scientific rigor on the topic of confidence, the papers I have studied will not really help you much. You see, scientists have defined confidence as the certainty of a belief or how much you think a belief of yours is probable. And of course, there are many other definitions, but even these aren't really practical for us. So I have decided to ditch the science a bit in this final chapter and therefore will show you real world examples from my life. Some will be fucking entertaining and the stories will teach you a thing or two about attaining ultimate core confidence. Let's leave the instruction towards self-confidence to the crazy shit I've been doing over the last four years. Let's get started. Confidence involves so many factors of life, including your personal identity or what you think you are. It also revolves tremendously around the purpose and meaning of life. Why and how? You see, when you're confident or even overconfident in something, you will do it like the truth of the fucking universe. This is indeed one of the greatest qualities in a man. It is the key to failing fast. It is the key to jump on the next thing you need to do to achieve your goal. Once you are confident in yourself, you will do activities with full immersion, full balls in thinking and action. Like you're going to die unless you do it. You'll make extreme sacrifices for these things. And you know what? Once you do them fully and have the habit of doing it, you will most likely realize that it's actually not your purpose in life. But at least you will analyze this and realize this. The advantage is that you will know exactly what to do next. And you now know what your purpose is not. Very important. And all of this is the game changer. The full immersion in one thing, no matter what the fuck it is, leads you to learn the next thing you need to do and go balls in for. I hope this makes sense, mate. If it doesn't, as I always say, send me an email and we will get to the bottom of it together. Or post it in the Facebook group. You have an entire tribe full of accountability partners who will guide you into your journey towards ultimate self-confidence. Vulnerability balance. I don't speak about RSD Derek much because he likes to keep it down low and is a very low profile type guy. I have nothing but amazing shit to say about this badass man and I can honestly say that he has a masculine mind full of self-confidence and away from most addictions and dysfunction i wish i could travel with him perhaps i'll do this again one day if you don't know who rsd Derek is i'll give you a rundown soon be sure to hear the master class i recorded with him in our master class series it is one of the best pieces of content i have ever recorded it's from the heart off the cuff 
and full of material you can listen to over and over and over your entire life. The golden nuggets Derek has dropped in this are second to none. We have a deep personal relationship and I am grateful to be in his orbit. Let me give you a simple example of Derek's ultimate self-confidence. So first and foremost, Derek is one of RSD's executive instructors. He takes his job very seriously. Having assisted him in multiple boot camps now and helping him at World Summit with his boot camp marketing and sales, I can tell you that this motherfucker is the most competent RSD instructor ever. He is a graduate of both of Booth Business School, the hardest business school in the United States. It is always ranked in the top two business schools in the US and is one of the best business schools in the world. So one time we were in a club in Manhattan and RSD Derek and RSD Luke were the instructors involved. We had six students, three per instructor. I was one of the three assistants helping out. I saw things that night that I have never seen and I will never forget. Fuck, I don't think any RSD assistant has ever seen some epic shit, such epic shit. Let's get into it. One of our students was what you might call an extremely beta heart case. He had massive approach anxiety, treated girls like they were queens and put each of them on a pedestal. He was going to do, he seemed hopeless and quite honestly, us assistants had zero clue about what kind of shit Derek was going to do with this guy. Anyway, we go inside and are chilling, at which time Derek asks the guy to make his first approach to three girls who are sitting at the bar inside the club. We had our, we had our table outside and the club at this time. So I go with this guy and help him approach these girls. Derek is watching us. Turns out these three girls, a blonde, typical white hottie, a big booty Latina and a tall, slim Indian girl. We're all super good looking and sexy, styling mommies. The student stutters his way in and somehow manages to get these girls to the table. He bribed them with free drinks and a place where with our epic group of guys and some good company. So he definitely offered some tangible value to get them to the table. What happens next will blow your mind. I was gaming the Indian girl and she was super happy and we were engaged in a sexual conversation. The beta guy, let's call him Rich, was very soft-spoken in speaking to the blonde. Derek was engaging the Latina. He loves big booty. <laughs> don't, don't we all? Both Derek and I had our eye on the student because it was ultimately his game which we were interested in taking to the next level. So one thing I noticed right off the bat was that the blonde was not really interested and speaking with Rich, although she was taking sips out of that drink. She was pretty much taking value rather than providing any, unless you count her sexy tits there for our viewing. <laughs> Derek ain't gonna have that shit, trust me. So what happened? Derek pulls Rich to the side and tells him, bro, what the fuck is happening with your girl? What is she saying? Rich says, nothing, man. She's just being super cold and emotionless. She's not even giving me the time of day. Ditch the bitch. Or as Derek would say, ditch the bitch. At this point, my eye brows raise because I have seen Derek do some epic, no, uber epic shit. And I know something amazing is about to happen. Rich is like, what? What do you mean, man? This is the hottest girl I've ever even talked to. So, in response, Derek grabs this student by the shirt and goes, Listen, you motherfucker. You're a goddamn boss and cool dude. This bitch is lucky to have you by her side. I want you to go to her right now and say, Get the fuck out of here. Leave the drink and take your friends with you. Jesus Christ, I am getting goosebumps right now as I read this, bro. Guess what the student did? He goes up to the big tittied blonde and says these words exactly. Bitch, get the fuck out of here. Leave the drinks and take your friends with you. <laughs> that bitch's face was priceless. Money can't buy that moment. It was so superb. And she was so flabbergasted that she froze. 
at this time, the student did something which Derek couldn't have even predicted. Rich grabs the bitch's drink, puts it on the table himself and screams. Didn't you hear me, bitch? Get the fuck away from our table and take your friends with you. Now! <laughs> yes, and she obeyed like a little puppy. My Indian girl left and I didn't really care. So did Derek's Latina. It was so epic. That very moment, the self-confidence I saw in that student's eyes was one of the best moments of my RSD career. What marvel, man. Derek's mentorship was the key. Just fantastic. So, as you may have guessed, Derek's testosterone levels are pretty high. And even though they are high, he's always asked me for advice for boosting testosterone even higher. This is a sign of humility. You see, Derek is a badass in two ways. He has high testosterone and self-confidence, but, but also very high humility. He works hard at what he does. He gets better every single day and stays on top of his game through hard work and dedication. He eats super healthy, trains hard, and sleeps well. He also knows a lot about testosterone from our channel, plus his own personal research and experience. He's one of my favorite people in the entire world, actually. The final topic I want to touch about confidence is that of vulnerability. I sincerely feel that vulnerability is the key to self-confidence. You must have the biggest balls even when it comes to speaking openly about your deepest, most embarrassing insecurities, which hold you back. Be open and cool about them. They are real. No need to hide or run away. Own them. Again, I'll tell you the ultimate secret of my self-confidence and how vulnerability plays such a massive role in it. When I think about my sexual experience, I feel anxious. I feel low confidence. My testosterone level goes down. It's a downward spike. Why? Because I'm ashamed about it. Me being a highly influential man with top level academic social skills and one of the best health and fitness competencies amongst my peers. My sex skills should always be and also be up there. They're not. I have just been super ashamed of my body most of my life. I've been ashamed of sexual intercourse and have, have always thought that the body is an evil thing. LMFAO. <laughs> so, how do I use this weakness as one of my greatest strengths? Easy. I tell the girl about my anxiety <laughs> when, the f when the first time comes. And the time comes early, man. Why? Because I believe in it. I believe that it's essential for the girl you like to know about this anxiety. This big insecurity. I tell the girl, hey, listen, I am sexually inexperienced. I want to express this insecurity to you because I need to know that I can trust you. And the only way I can trust you is if I share with you my deepest secrets. And you know what happens? The girl becomes even more attracted and attached to me. Some of my greatest relationships were when I spent two hours during our first date to tell her everything about my sex life and religion and conservative upbringing. It will get better. This is the one secret that has changed the sex and dating life of my one-on-one -on -one clients who struggle with women. Now you know the secret as well. The first chance you get, I want you to use it.